Story time with Stephanie Story. Uh, I am Stephanie Story. Welcome to Story Time. I could not be more ecstatic about my guest today, who is an actor. And I've been like arguing with myself over what adjective to use all day. So I'm settling on beloved acting teacher in Los Angeles. He's the founder of Actors Workout Studio, which has been operating out of the same theater for 30 years in North Hollywood. And he just came out with a book, Act Authentically. Uh, I have lots to ask him about. Uh, welcome to the show, Fran Montana. Oh, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for joining me in our weird cyber world, which I'm going to ask about later uh, with the actor. Okay. Um, but before I get to that, so I am picturing my friends, family, fans sitting at home. And honestly, like I was when I first walked into your theater, I did not know what acting really was. I watched movies. I watched TV. I thought maybe actors, I don't know, delivered lines, played pretend. That was about the gist of it. So can you tell my viewers what is acting? Wow, that's a great question. And, you know, I'll, I just want to say that I had the same experience when I was starting out as an actor. A lot of people want to be actors because they like the cachet of it. They want to be on People magazine and be famous. And it's like, oh, it's so cool. And, uh, but they don't really know what the craft is about. And uh, hence what led me to this book and, 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 and you know, my whole journey. So um, the question is, once it went again, what is acting? What is that? What is acting? What do actors do? What? Just explain it like you're explaining it to my mother. What do actors? Oh, okay. You know, actors are you know they're storytellers, they're performers, they're artists, they're um, ex expressive souls who are uh, interpreting characters and conveying humanity to the world. Um, they're, they're like musicians are to music. They are what, you know, humans are to humanity. So they're, they're performers. They show the human condition and they demonstrate it and act it out and be, are examples of it so that other people can be touched by it and, and become uh, um, healed by it and, you know, and, and notice the, the familiarity that we all have in humanity. I guess that's what it is. I mean, that's the why it is but you know the actual what does an actor do is you know the definition in every book is actors you know live truthfully under imaginary circumstances moment to moment that's the work that they do i usually start out with that every person is a unique animation of whatever they your creator is whether it's god or whatever you want to call it but every soul and every person is different there is nobody on the planet that is who each person is Okay, that's, and everybody's individual and everybody's unique. And, and, and the thing about being an actor is there's nobody like you who's an actor. There's nobody who, there's nobody, nobody can be who you are except you. So the work is let's find out who you are and um, let's get you to express your truth and your imagination because nobody can express your truth and your imagination the way that you can. So the beginning of the work is about who are you? How do you express yourself? What is the artist within you? And so we unpeel it, we reveal it, we peel it like an onion. We find out the core of who is this person? Who are you coming from? So the essence of the work is to, you know, get to that place. Who are you? Who, well, who are you? How do you operate? How do you create? I have a lot of people who say, you know, oh, I want to be an, I always ask everybody, why do they want to be an, I ask that same question. What is acting? Half, nobody knows the answer to that when they come into my class. And I'll say, well, you want to be an actor, you don't even know what you do, you know? And, 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 and I don't, I've never heard any two people give me the same answer as to what it is or what we do, really. Um, but um, I, I ask people why they want to be actors, and I get several reasons. And one reason is I want to be rich and famous. Those people don't last very long. The other reason is I, I hear is I, I have something inside me that I want to express. And I don't know what it is, but I want to get to the core of it. Just like a writer wants to get to the core of who they are, or a musician wants to write music to the core, or a poet, or a writer of any sort. So in acting, it's like they have this thing in them and they want to get it out. <clears throat> so 
you know, I always ask people, the funniest answer I got is people say, well, I, I don't like who I am and I want to be other people. That's why I want to be an actor. I want to do all these parts that are not to me because I don't like who I am. And I always come back to them and I say, well, how do you do that unless you know who you are? Because the more you know who you are, the more you know who you aren't. And the more you know who you are, the more your imagination of who you want to be is stronger. So the whole work is about that, unfolding that, discovering that, finding that out. That's the, that's the work of the actor. So, um, but basically it's about self-expression. That's all it is. It's about self-expression. And most people are bottled up with it. And they have a hard time getting back in touch with it. They have it as children. They have it as kids. But they don't, when they get to adults, they cut it down because... The education process has taught them to be logical, to think, to make smart decisions, and they lose all their creative talent. That's why people, I think, go into acting. At least the people I get, they come into it. A lot of them are very educated, they're very intelligent, they have very good careers, but they say something's missing. I don't feel the way I want to, I, I can't express my feelings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Long answer. No, no, not, not, I, you know, I can sit and listen to you for like three hours talk about this stuff. Um, no, I was thinking about the fact that I, I know from personal experience, you get a lot of non-actors in your theater. It's not just about people who are there to learn to be Hollywood actors or be on camera or whatever. You get writers like me and directors and other people who are doing other kinds of art coming to learn to express themselves. Um, I'm going to start with why do you think people who are not trying to actually be actors in their career show up to your doorstep? And then I have another question. Well, I think the people that show up to my doorstep are people that are trying to seek and feel that how they're expressing themselves isn't full and rich and complete. And they want to kind of explore that process. So I get writers, I get directors, I get lawyers. I get public speakers, I get therapists, I get a lot of salespeople. And they say, I wanna, I wanna be freer. I wanna be freer in my, in my approach. And, and so I wanna look into acting because I think you know, maybe that's what I do. So those are the kind of people that come because they wanna find that out for themselves. They wanna discover that for themselves. They wanna find out what makes them tick and how they can, do, how they can express themselves better. Writers, we tend to be in our heads, right? So I know when, when, when I'm trying to do this work with you, it's the head that gets in the way. How do you get that out of the way for writers, salespeople, or attorneys, people who are really in their brains to get more into your body and expressing yourself? yourself? Well, you're, actually, that's very interesting because lawyers and salespeople and writers definitely operate very much from the cerebral side of their head and they're very much thinkers. I, you know, writers are always fun challenges when they come to my class because my job is to try to get them out of their head because they're always thinking logically. They're thinking of the arc. They're thinking of the storyline. By page 10, this has to happen. And, you know, something has to happen here. Something has to happen by this point. And so they're thinking very logically, how do I need to make that happen? Um, just like a lawyer, when they're in there, they're trying to logically explain something to the, to the um, jury. And what they want to do is they want the jury to feel, you know, and you can't get somebody to feel by kind of explaining something logically. So you got to cross that line and get more emotionally involved. So the work is about, I, I, I like to say this, I'm, I say this to the writers a lot. I've said this to you probably. We're going to rewire you. I want you to take your brain as you know it and put it up on the shelf. And when you come into this classroom, I want you to, I'm gonna get you into your body, all right? Into your body. So for example, you know, I might have you close your eyes and, and say, express a color to me, black, red, or white, you know? And you know, people will start thinking and they'll be thinking, well, let me see, I, I got a black shirt on, so I'll point to my black shirt or I've got, uh, or white skin, or I got a white shirt on, I'll do that. That's logically explaining it to me. And so we try to do exercises with those, like, well, what does it feel like to you? And they're like, lost. And I say, you know who can do this exercise really well? Kids. Because they're not inhibited. And they'll say, this is black, 
and this is white and this is whatever. And so we have to go back to that place of, of getting into our body. So the work is about all the exercises in the beginning are all about your body, getting in touch with your body, your animal, your animal instinct. Because talent comes from instincts. Whether you're a writer, whether you're an actor, whether you're a musician, your talent comes from an intuitive instinct. And that is not a cerebral process. And that's where writers get tangled up. They're trying to do a cerebral process, but it's more like a, a feeling. Um, a lot of the writers I work with, they come because they, they can logically write a great script, but they can't seem to catch the, the, the emotion of the soul of the character. You know, because they're trying to tell a story, and I'm trying to, and, and we come from, well, how does this person feel? And what does this person want out of life? And what they want out of life and how they feel may not be logical. So writers are always trying to wrestle with those two things. Writers are God. They're gods. They create the universe. They create the story. They create the weather. They create the beings, the animals, all the, the species. I mean, they're beautiful, beautiful people. They got a lot to think about. And if they just, and if they don't follow a logical um, uh, pattern, nobody's gonna, gonna stay with them. But if they only do that, and they don't get into the heart and soul of the characters, they're gonna lose the audience. So you, you have a big job. So my job is to help them get to that place. Most writers take the course because they say, I wanna understand my characters better. I wanna make my characters richer. I wanna make my characters deeper. You know, and I can logically know why he goes from A to B, but emotionally, it's not there. And, and, and where writers don't think that way because they're wired logically. So we have to kind of, you know, shut down the left side of the brain and open up the right side. Okay, so you said a word that I have to follow up on, and it's also a follow up on this whole line of thinking, which is you said, you know, to where talent comes from. So use the word talent. Is there really such a thing as talent for students? Can you rewire the brain and, and, and get to be a great actor without it, just from hard work? Or does it have to come from a mixture of both? Where do you stand on that? Well, some people have talent in certain areas. Musicians might have talent in you know, creating music, channeling through them. Painters might have talent of, you know, visual vi things coming through them. If you think about acting, they're being humans, okay? They're being human. They're not coming up with anything that isn't human. So they're speaking and they're living true emotional lives. So I believe everybody has talent. I believe everybody has the ability to be creative in terms of acting, you know, because we're human. And we're playing humans. So that's very different than playing an instrument. I gotta learn the instrument. I gotta learn that instrument. I gotta play that instrument. I gotta practice that piano. I gotta play every note. You know, but in act, but it, but in acting, I just gotta learn how to be human. I gotta learn how I feel and learn how to express my feelings like everybody does. So I believe I I, I hate when teachers, I don't want to use the word hate, but it really bothers me when acting teachers say that other people you don't have talent because I can tell you stories if you you know we go on I can tell you stories how you know talent is it's 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 the release of what's inside that's what talent is it's the release of instincts and intuition and challenging so when your instrument's free you can do this I mean I'm sure you can cry Stephanie I'm sure you can laugh Stephanie I'm sure you can get angry I'm sure you can be compassionate I'm sure you can do all these things that human do but humans do but the craft of acting is to be able to do it on cue and be able to do it at the right time and to be able to make imaginary circumstances so that you can do it and that's just getting in touch with your freedom and your free spirit of doing it so talent for acting a lot of my acting colleagues probably won't agree with me but everybody has talent but it's a question of how hard it is to get to it and what are you willing to do to get to it what are you willing to, you know, expose yourself to? Because the ego creates so many masks and we always have this thing. So my work is to open that up and, you know, fight people on it and to get them to, you know, try to express, get in touch with their true feelings without worrying about 
how it looks or how it's going to affect their image or you know their ego yeah but that makes that, sense. yeah but that's real i mean in, particularly in the craft of acting so in, in in the craft of writing i feel like i can challenge myself and i can push myself without ego and without worrying about what other people are going to see because i get to revise it part of acting is being exposed on camera in that moment when you're falling flat on your face like that's such a hard thing to grapple with so that's so interesting i could say you know to me writing is harder you have to be trained in literature you have to understand grammar you have to understand you know you have to have good vocabulary you have to know sentence structure god that's training that's studying Acting, I gotta, what am I gonna do? I gotta cry. I cried as a baby. But you have to so cry on command. Off when I'm driving down. Huh? You have to cry on command with a camera rolling. It's okay, yeah. So I know I can do it. Now it's a question of finding tools so that I can make it happen when I need it to happen. That's different. I'm learning how to do what I already know how to do. I'm just learning how to do it more on cue and more, you know, appropriately to the situation. So that's where I need tools. But, you know, everybody can get angry, everybody can cry, everybody can laugh, everybody can be beautiful, everybody can be ugly, everybody can be mean. So I don't have to go to, I don't have to read a book or go to college to do that. I have to train my instrument. I got to get into a classroom and into a laboratory where I can work on my, that part of my instrument. Just like if I want to build my muscles, I can go to the gym and work on my muscles. Right. And that's what the acting muscles are. But the difference is, and this is what's fascinating to me. It's not easy, Stephanie. It isn't easy. But everybody has the capacity, if they're willing, to let themselves go down that path and be that raw and vulnerable. It's terrifying. And I know that's, that's a lot of what you do is challenge people to get over their blocks, to hit that like terror level and do it anyway. I, I um, prefer the word inspire, but yes. <laughs> I go with terror, but it's okay. <laughs> but yeah, you're right, yes. Why, oh, okay, wait, go back. Why did you become an actor? And then I'm gonna follow up by asking why you transitioned, why you became a teacher. Why did you become an actor? I'll tell you, it's a real, yeah, I guess I can tell this story. Um, you know, I think I'm a classic story of why people come to me. When I was, you know, uh, 19 years old, I came home from college one weekend to find my father didn't know who I was. And he had a brain tumor and it just kind of popped in him. And I came from a very Italian Catholic family and all the uncles gathered around and they all took me under their wings because I lived in a city with a lot of Italian relatives. And they all said, you're the man, men don't cry, take care of your mother and your sister. And I basically shut myself down so that I could handle this and I didn't cry, okay? So, you know, I was a very successful, you know, steward of taking care of the family, but I was shut down. I had no emotional life, okay? So I went to college, got a nice degree, got a degree in business, got, you know, had all kinds of opportunities coming towards me, really good opportunities coming for me, but I was completely emotionally shut down. I couldn't cry, I couldn't laugh, you know? I couldn't feel. I'd go to a movie and I would be numb. So, at a point when I was pretty young, I just kind of, I said, this is not going to work. I always was interested in the arts. I got I to gotta get back in touch with my feelings. So I sold everything, you know, like uh, Billy, Joel's, Billy Joel's song, My Life. Remember that line? I sold this house, sold this house, bought a ticket to the West Coast. That's what I did. And I came out here and I started seeking and I started, I took a writing class, I took a music class. And I found myself in an acting class where the teacher was very confrontive of, I can't tell you how you feel. I said, that's why I'm here. And so this process started where I started, you know, I had to get in touch with my feelings and express it. And it was hard. It was really hard. But I loved it because I was finding myself. 
I was in touch with my feelings. They were painful, but I got in touch with who I was and I was able to feel things. I was able to laugh. Terrible story. I can't fathom you not being full of you. You know, I mean, it, it's so foreign to me because I didn't know that you. That's remarkable. And that's what acting gave you. That's what got me into acting. So then why did you become a teacher? Well, it's interesting. I, I mean, I, I, I was very fortunate because I fell madly in love with the craft. I really loved acting. I loved it. I loved all of it. I love the, the feeling of it and the, the drama of it and the life of it and the, and the business of it. And I just loved it. And, um, and I studied for many years. And my teacher, <laughs> his name was Edward K. Martin. He was a brilliant, brilliant teacher. He asked me if I wanted to train to be a teacher for him. And I said, well, you know, that sounds a lot better than tending bar and painting houses, you know, in between jobs because I loved it anyway. And I said, yeah. So I went, I, he mentored me for like two years as a teacher. And I really fell in love with that because the same thing I'm doing as an actor, instead of doing it for an audience of two or 2,000 or two million, I was working with one person at a time and I could really see the effect. And uh, I guess I, I, I really, really liked it. And I went from, you know, my journey, I was basically a full-time actor who was teaching part-time to becoming a full-time teacher who acts part-time. That's been kind of my journey. But I always asked my teacher, why did he choose me? I mean, he had really good actors in there. I said, why did you choose me to be your, you know, why, I don't get it. And he said, because you were the most difficult shutdown actor I've ever seen who became the best, one of the best freeing actors I've ever worked with. He says, in the journey you went on, he said, I can tell if you were willing to do that. I mean, it took him years. This was not like, this was like years. He said, if you could make that journey and understand that journey, you probably have the sensitivity to help other people. And he was right. He saw that in me. So, you know, and, and, and so that's what, and then when I started teaching, I just, I just really fell in love with it. I just loved, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm helping people one at a time versus, you know, I've always considered myself an educator, even when I was an actor. I always considered myself an educator. I produced a lot of theater when I was an actor, and it was always pieces that I, I only would take a piece that I thought could say something and teach people something. If people were to say to me, are you, are you a performer, you know, what, are you a performer, you're an actor, and I'd say, yeah, but I really think I'm an educator. And I think, you know, years later, it's kind of paying off. It's like, yeah, okay, that's what I did, actually. I built a theater, I wrote a book, and I'm teaching actors, and I'm teaching teachers. That's what acting is, though, teaching people how to be human in some way, teaching people how yes. to be human, right? Um, okay, so, so I wasn't going to go in this order, but now I'm in it, so now I'm going in it. So now what made you finally write a book? Because you've been doing this, you've been teaching for 30 years, right? More than. You've had this one theater for 30 years. How come this finally now? Okay, good question. Um, the approach that I take to teaching actors, by the, because of the way that I was trained, is an actor will come to Los Angeles and they'll have any different kinds of experience. Some people have theater degrees, some people have masters in theater, some people just like it. Some people were stand-up comedians. Some people were writers. Some people took a class here and a class there. Some of you might have studied Little Meisner here or Little Uda, you know, Stella or Little some. They got little pieces of training. And I work with, you know, I want to see where an actor is and then take them to their next level. So years of teaching actors, kind of like a private coach is what I was doing. And after teaching for about seven years, I'm like, I'm noticing the same issues coming up with a lot of people. Like, you, I'd have somebody who was, you know, they'd have an MFA in acting. And I'm like, you know, you don't, you don't prepare this moment very well. We gotta go back and do that. And then I work with some really known working actors, and it's like, you know, you're just doing the same trick. You know, you're doing the same trick every time, and it's working, and you're making money. But there's so much more there. So the preparation processes that I was noticing, with I saw a lot of holes. And so I took notes on that over all these years and I, and I designed a class 
that built a foundation so that if you if you go through each level of the foundation, you're not going to have those holes because everything builds on everything else. So it took me 15 years to write this book. Um, I used to think it was my procrastination, and then I realized, no, it took me that long to gather this information and to create this curriculum that really does it. And uh, so I've been teaching this this for about 15 years, and then, of course, the book was just, the, you know, I was using notes and notes, and then I put it together in a book. But you know, So to me, it's a real foundation of the work. I tell people when they take the beginning class that I've built, I get, I get advanced actors who take it because they missed a couple things. They want to review. I get people who never studied acting. I get, um, like I say, you know, writers and lawyers. And, 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 and I tell people this, and I say it in the book as well. It's like if you take this, you read this book and do the exercises, or you take my class, at the end of four months, you're going to know what acting is. So when you ask me, what is it? You're going to know what it is. You're going to know if you like it. You're also going to know if you're any good at it. And you're going to know if what you want to do next, whether it's I want to pursue this further, or, you know, now I know what it's about. I don't want to do it. Or it spun me into, oh, I want to write, or I want to direct. I, uh, I have to say, I, I took Fran's beginning class, what now feels like eons ago, um, and it changed my writing. It was before I'd published my debut. I, I, I came into your theater before that, and it completely altered the way I write because it altered the way I, uh, my point of view of things. I suddenly figured out that I had an opinion about things and that that was okay to have an opinion about things. It was okay to feel things. Um, so that, that beginning class changed me as a writer. And you found out more of who you are yeah. so that you could bring that to your writing. I, I, I get emails, uh, Stephanie, I don't know if I shared this with you before, but like, sometimes a year or two years after somebody takes my class, I'll get an email from them. And one of them will say, you know, that class really changed me. I understand who I am. I initially left Nebraska. I left my parents' business because I wanted to be an actor. So I came out there. And I just want you to know now I'm, you know, I packed up my bags and I moved to New York and I'm now studying acting. Thank you. And then I'll get the same email from someone else who will say, you know, I left my home in Arkansas. I came out here to be an actor. I left my family business. And after taking your class, I went back home, I'm taking over the family business, I married my childhood sweetheart, and the difference is, I know what I want, I know what it's about, I know it's not for me. And I don't have to live in that, I wonder if, dream. So, it goes back to the beginning of who are you? You know, who are you? What makes you tick? Where's your passion? Get over this uh, idea of what acting is and really find out what it's about. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wrote this book in first person all because of you. It's your fault. Um, oh. Okay, so um, I, I have to ask, because we're in this weird moment of this pandemic with shelter in place and this quarantine and stuff. And acting is so much, I mean, when I'm at your theater, it's all about like the one-on-one -on -one interaction between people and how you're making me feel and how I'm making you feel. And now your studio has moved online. I am taking a Zoom class from your studio. So I am experiencing this online thing, very different for a lot of reasons. How are you seeing it impact you guys? How is it going from your perspective for the theater and the students and the, and, and the work and the craft? Well, you know, it's really interesting because it's different, mm -hmm. but it's very, very powerful. And it's, um, there's a whole new, you know, I'm a dinosaur. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a theater person. I'm a dinosaur. I love that old fashioned thing. But I tell, I, I, I tell the story in my class. When I was a young actor going out for auditions, you would go and you'd meet a casting director and you'd have a general interview. And they just wanted to meet you and see who you were. They, you didn't even act for them. They'd look at your picture and resume and they'd say, oh, where are you from? Da, 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 da. 
and you do that, you say thank you, and you'd leave, but you wouldn't act for them. Um, and then you would, if they liked you, they'd call you back in and you'd audition for them and they'd read you for a part and you'd read for the part. And then if you, uh, if they liked you, they'd send you to the producer and then you'd read in front of the producer and they would say, you know, they hire you or not. And there was something called working the room. You know, you know how to talk to those casting people. You use how to use your charisma. You knew how to, it was part of your instrument. It was part of your art, how to work a room, how to win them over, how to let them know who you are without being too arrogant and too snotty and be humble. And it's a real art. We would call it working the room. It was really sad because some actors were really good at working the room, but they had, couldn't act when it came time. And then there were some actors who were really good actors, but they didn't know how to work a room. So that was the craft and the tools back then. Now it's different. Now a director is on a set. He's at his lunch hour. And the casting director brings up a computer and says, take a look at these actors. And he's looking at three or, you know, 30 seconds, 20 seconds of an actor on tape and says, yeah, hire that one, hire that one, hire that one. Very different than my day. So actors need to know how to work in front of what we're doing. They gotta be free, they gotta be spontaneous, I gotta see them, I gotta see into their eyes, I gotta experience them. And that is a craft, that is an art, that is working the room. Okay, so aside from the technical stuff that is absolutely changing and we're all dealing with that every single day on Zoom, and I mean, even if you're at a regular job, you're dealing with it right now. Is this moment going to change acting in any way? A weird question, but I've just been, I've been wondering about how it's gonna change writing. So I think it is gonna change what we're writing. So I'm wondering if you have any thoughts about, is it gonna change how we approach this craft? You know, I do think it's going to affect, in terms of our teaching technique, how things are going to change. I'm noticing in my online classes, it's a lot more intimate. It's funny. I wouldn't think it would be. But when I'm doing a class in my studio, they're coming into my space. They're sitting on a stage, and they're talking to an audience. Okay? Now, I'm coming into your room. And I'm seeing you in your home. So show me who you are. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, it's different. It's more intimate. So on certain, in certain areas, I'm finding actors are becoming more vulnerable. And on certain areas, I'm seeing something different. So it is definitely, I don't think the craft of acting is going to be any different. But I do think the way in, and to get to them is changing. It's, it's, I'm already seeing it in my classes. Some people are really uncomfortable being in front of a screen like this, being watched, and not being able to see how people are responding to them, you know, like if I'm just in the center. But this is all very, very important. Uh, the, biggest, the biggest drawback that people say is they say, well, you know, it's not, it's just, you know, I need to be in front of the person, and I need, it doesn't feel right, I'm in my house. And my answer is, no, we as actors, and this is another thing that's really, I think, going to help our training, is we've got to dive into the imaginary circumstances. Do you understand? I can sit there and say, well, I'm in my office talking to Stephanie. I'm just in a little box. But the reality is, is if I can't dive into this and into the imagination of this and believe that I'm sitting right in front of you and I can see those books on your shelf and I can kind of see like, oh, let's read those kind of books, huh? If I can't let myself go into that space, I'm not going to be as effective. And it's like that on a set. You know, I, I just worked on a pilot not too long ago, and I was green screen. <laughs> it was green screen. You know? And so you, that's, just, that's not any different. I always tell people when you do a love scene and it's real intimate, it's like, you know, there's 12 people around you, and there's a guy holding a, you know, a reflector, like, right under your chin. The camera's right here behind your, on your shoulder. And it's like, you gotta, all that stuff's gotta go away and you gotta get into your love scene. Same thing here. It's the same thing here. I gotta get into this space. If I'm doing a scene with you, I gotta get into it. So it's requiring some different kinds of parts of your brain that you have to um, ignite 
that you haven't before. And I think it's going to pay off later because it's going to pay off when they're on camera. It's going to pay off when they do their auditions on tape because so many auditions now are on tape. And I already noticed people are getting more comfortable. Um, Fran, I could sit here and talk to you for 800 hours because I love you and think you're brilliant and think everybody should read this and then think everybody should just go to the studio and take acting classes from Fran. Because... What, what, what's really been interesting is that, you know, I get calls all the time from people from Atlanta, New York, Chicago, even San Francisco saying, hey, do you recommend somebody here? Because they might have been following me online because, you know, my studio is in Hollywood. Yeah. And it's like, hey, do you recommend anybody? And I'm like, well, you know, maybe so-and-so, but not necessarily. But now they can actually take my class. I have people all over the, like you, you're in another city. I'm in Arkansas right now, and I'm in your class. That, yeah. to me, has been it's, like a gift of the pandemic. So that's a, a real beautiful thing. I think, I think people who are sitting in, um, you know, maybe small towns or in other cities or have other careers and say, you know, I always wanted to act. I always wanted to, maybe I'll go to... LA for a year and see, they can now take this class online and by the end, they're gonna know. It's like, I'm done or I'm going up. Story time with Stephanie, story, story time virtually. We've got time and plenty of stories, talking stories in a novel way. Story time with Stephanie.